Well, hello and welcome everyone to Market at Midday, streaming to you live from Spotty Connect for this Monday, the 7th of March. Uh, and what a crazy week just passed. Um, two uh, child and adolescent heroes of mine, Rodney Marsh, the man I always wanted to be when I grew up, and then you had Shane Warne, the man I wish I could have been when I grew up, um, unfortunately passing. It's, uh, I was fortunate to see both of them play, though, and it is another timely reminder of the important things of life. Uh, i.e. not investing. Uh, but nonetheless, though, here we are today. Uh, charts on Monday, technical Monday, that's what we do. We started, the market started, um, well, flat miraculously. Uh, it's now fallen um, throughout the day, which is probably what everyone was sort of expecting when we all woke up this morning. Um, let's get into the content, though, and talk about um, what's occurring on the uh, global scale, particularly uh, with our S&P 200, as well as the overseas indices, because there's some Interesting stuff going on there. Um, just a, a time, or well, well, let me just remind you all of the uh, uh, agenda, uh, markets, the charts of interest, and then shine the light at the end. A reminder as well that if you click in the bottom right hand corner there, you'll be able to expand the little screen that you're looking at just to make it easier for you to see the charts and what I'm writing on the charts. Um, again, a reminder that all the information in this presentation is in no way designed to take into account your objectives, financial situations or needs. And therefore, should you wish to act on any of this information, you need to do so in light of your own personal circumstances. Of course, past performance is no indicator of future performance. And if you wish to discuss any of this content with anyone other than your significant other in life, then please find an advisor that's licensed to have that conversation with you. Um, alternatively, ask a question in the app and we'll answer it in a general way, of course. Okay, so let's go to the S&P 500. On the weekly chart, the market rally in the afternoon was enough to avoid a new downtrend just. I mean, this thing here is hanging on by its fingertips. Um, how long can it hold, though, is really what everyone's asking. Will this week be the period whereby we have entered into a downtrend for the S&P 500? Time will tell. Um, <clears throat> all the weekly indicators are negative on the daily chart. We are in a downtrend. Um, so that's important to uh, mention that, that <clears throat> though, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat's gone a little bit there. Though we might be hanging on by fingertips, uh, the arms are starting to strain, that's for sure. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like we're going to be letting go very soon. Uh, <clears throat> the various monthly averages I use just to help me determine the broader sentiment and trend are converging, which means they're coming close together, which is not a good sign. It basically means that the pace of the previous upward trend is starting to ease and we are about to uh, embark on a uh, correction period. I'd strongly advise against heavy investment right now. I know you're probably feeling, seeing some stocks in incredible value and you're thinking to yourself, it's too good to be true. It probably um, will be a good opportunity in time. It's just now might not be that time. Uh, the index in the S&P 500 uh, needs to get back above 4,582.5 to provide any confidence that it's at least stabilised. Uh, the index must not fall below 4,293.4. Now, this is a change. That range has been tightened from the previous 4,226.2. So let's have a look at those um, charts at the moment in order to, uh, so you can see what I'm looking at here. Um, that, this little price action here right on the end, so this is the S&P 500 weekly. So we were um, virtually uh, dead set, ready to be entering into a downtrend. And in the second half of the trading day on Friday in the US time, um, we saw a, about a 300 point rally. It still closed down but it did um, close up on the, um, on the low of the day. That was enough for us to maintain that level of support. You can see uh, we previously uh, tested this support um, in September. Uh, we tested the support again in January, and now we've tested the support again in February. Half glass full view of the world is that if the US market has a ripping week this week, then that's going to be an incredibly bullish signal notwithstanding geopolitical concerns, etc. However, with fears of rising cost inflation in the US, in particular what's happening with gasoline prices and the cost of living, um, it's going to be very difficult to see any immediate stimulus to suggest that it's going to be a ripping week. It might be positive, might be able to hold its own, but I doubt it's going to be strong enough to break out 
um, or to provide any conviction. So you can see here it's hanging right on support at the moment on the weekly chart. When we break it down to the daily, though, it's important to note that we are in a downward trend. So you'll see there, um, again, I'll keep it simple. I'm just looking at where those higher highs and lower highs and all that are formed because it's a chart pattern that we've seen a million times over. It's how we know that we're looking at a share price chart. So we can see here the highest high um, achieved just before 2022. And since then, we've had a series of uh, lower lows and lower highs. Technically, on a daily chart, we are already in a downtrend. Of course, sometimes the daily chart can be a little bit misleading because it has a lot of trade and activity in that, a lot of noise, um, for the use of a better term. But we, as you saw with that weekly chart, which is obviously a, a snapshot of every fifth day, as it were, um, we are starting to uh, hit the precipice, and hence why my not alarmist, but my alert condition that I've got myself on now, uh, whereby just going to refrain from making any heavy investment. If it's nice weather where you are at the moment, it's heaven knows we need some, given the uh, disaster that many of you in New South Wales and Queensland have experienced recently. Um, go and smell the roses, tend to the garden, do the important stuff, folks, because, uh, yeah, I dare suggest there's going to be a bit of time before the market sorts itself out here uh in this instance if i can bring it down to the s p asx 200 though um it didn't feel like it but the market in a broader sense actually had a positive week in australia um now the thing is though if the market closes this week down it will be on a new downtrend on the weekly chart um but that's because the strong base for weekly support has been set so breaking below that will be a uh, a pretty bearish sort of signal on the weekly chart, though, the indicators are looking negative. Both the RSI and MACD are in negative territory. Um, the positive week, though, does see, you know, just gives us a bit of a chance to breathe. Tidy up the portfolio, folks, if you need to. Just right now, now is not the time to be investing based on hope um, or on, um, you know, or on some idea that you're going to go down like Captain Ahab with the ship. Um, now it's not the time to do that. So we've got a little bit of time to breathe. That time was, a lot of it was this morning, actually. Like I said, I was very surprised how strong the market was on the open. Um, it's since uh, fallen off a bit, I think down 0.7% at the time I turned up uh, or turned the uh, screen on. The ATR is breached. Moving averages have converged. They've come together on a daily chart. The crucial level now is 6,986.3 on the S&P 200. This has been lifted as well from the previous uh, target, which was 6,814. Cautions continue to be advised. And uh, by that, here's us looking at the weekly chart. There's that level of support that I was talking about. We did finish that last bar there positive. So we've got a strong level of support. If it finishes down below that support level, um, it may finish down and still be above that support level. That'll be a very thin outcome, <laughs> a very thin line. Um, but nonetheless, though, it's, a, um, it's an indicator as to that, uh, you know, we just need to be a little bit cautious from a broad investment perspective. Companies will still have their individual motives, folks. And like I said, I'm not saying you necessarily liquidate every single position you've got. But what you want to be doing is making sure you're holding on to good patterns and you're getting rid of the bad patterns. All right. That's, that's basically, I mean, you should be doing that anyway as a chartist if you are following the dark art of technical analysis. The chart looks bad. You're not in, right? Full stop. You don't just start with technical analysis and then sell on fundamental analysis. That doesn't work that way, right? So with regards to the chart, if you're in bad charts, if you're in a good chart, you may not necessarily be getting out right now. And if you want to get into a brand new stock, that chart has to look pristine, okay? And even with the charts that I've got today, none of them really look pristine. Some of them look pretty good, but they, they're not quite pristine. But again, you, you just got to make sure it, it's a very good looking chart for you to go in and uh, buy into at this current point because the bias is definitely to the downside. And you can see that here again with the daily chart. So um, a previous high, uh, the start of January, late December, uh, we then had that rapid sell off through January, which created a new base lower low. We then had a subsequent lower high um, and now we've pulled back a bit and we've got a bit of support there. Uh, break that support, the next level of support will become that previous lower low, break below that, and yes, it's um, watch out below. So again, though, because of the US caution, 
It amplifies the caution we have here in Australia. They cough, we get the gold. So it's just a um, another cautionary tale. We've broken below that downward channel. Oh, sorry, that sideways channel. So most of the indicators, the chart is telling us to be cautious right now, rather than getting too over exuberant. So one of the key themes at the moment, in particular with the global crisis going on, it's time for us to go to stocks of interest. And I wanted to bring this one up here, triple, uh, triple O. Uh, that's not triple zero, folks. This is triple O, the letter O for octopus. Um, beta shares oil ETF. So this is an ETF based on the price of oil that the fine people of beta shares have made available to the outside world, effectively allowing Australians to get a pure exposure to just the oil price, not all the other operational issues with oil stocks or the or the discount that's associated with gas stocks or any of that sort of stuff. This is purely a reflection in regards to what the price of oil is doing. And you can see, folks, that at the minute it's uh, it's up, it's going up. So what we've had um, since um, uh, back in 2020, which is of course the um, the COVID reset, is we've had a series of higher high um, higher lows, I should say, which is basically the premise and then higher highs. You can see there, there was some resistance and support. So after this higher low, we sort of hit that um, high and then we came back to here and then we hit it again and then we came back. So that was obviously a very strong level of res um, resistance. When the price broke through that early in 2022, it was a sign that, the, um, that, that we're now entering into a possible new move up. The next level of resistance, uh, folks, as you can see there, and now remember this is the ETF, not the price of barrel of oil per se, but of course it's reflective um, with a little bit taken off the fees, um, as you'd expect, So, uh, but it's close enough uh, to it. Uh, $11.56 is that next level of resistance that I'd be watching at. So we're looking at about at least another 10% rise from here, I dare suggest, um, for oil, which is going to screw a lot of mum and dads over um, for those that are driving instead of catching public transport at the moment, all those sorts of extra factors, is this is going to be something that's going to be a big news story, I dare suggest, for the first quarter of this year, the rising price of oil. I've noticed at the Bowser near me, we're getting close to $2 a litre. I'm sure many of you have seen that closer to your houses, um, particularly if you're outside the immediate um, uh, area of the CBD. Fortunately, I'm not too far, and I'm on the actual right side of the uh, where all the uh, refineries are. So that actually helps me as well, but I'm sure many of you on the other side uh, may very well be copying it, or of course, um, in other parts of Australia. Another great sector performing at the moment is the agricultural sector. Again, the fine people of Beta Shares have provided food, F-O-O-D. This is their agribusiness ETF. Uh, for more details in regards to what they do, please go to the Beta Shares website where they have all their products listed and you'll get a very comprehensive review in regards to what the fund is, what it's trying to do, what it invests in, and um, the size of it as well. That's also important to know that you're not the only guy um, that owns it, uh, or lady, I should say, but um, person, let's call it that. Um, so as you can see here, in recent times, this has been a pretty solid run up again from November couple of higher highs and then we've had a couple of higher lows that is exactly what we want to see that is a price going in an upward trend and as you can see we're getting close to there obviously the um, final emergency level is that break level there at seven dollars 24 currently the price at around seven dollars 82 so that's about 10 percent pullback from here so this is a really nice structured chart clear signal for when you would have to get out um, and obviously highly leveraged to the fact that Agricultural conditions in Australia continue to remain robust, notwithstanding the rain that we've seen. Much of that was not in agricultural land, so that was good. Um, and because of the lessons learned in 2011, we got much better in regards to managing things like livestock, et cetera, et cetera. The trials and tribulations in Russia and Ukraine, of course, are having a massive impact in regards to grain supply globally. That will no doubt support prices. Ammonium production, uh, one of our spotters actually asked that question in the network. Um, yes, they make a large amount of ammonium, which is um, uh, we're going to need uh, to help us grow crops. But of course, uh, the price of it will go up on account of delays and problems in regards to that region of the world. So the agricultural sector has got a pretty sweet um, at the minute. And this is an ETF that you may wish to consider uh, if you wanted to uh, play the thematic. This and um, uh, Triple O, of course. 
Um, okay, let's get to the more uh, traditional um, sort of stocks and uh, rhythm biosciences. Remembering I'm keeping it just to the chart here in this instance. I am not uh, going into the uh, fundamental sort of stuff. Um, so for argument's sake, I don't know what they do. I've got um, no idea what their prospects are. I purely brought this up because the chart looked interesting to me. Why did it look interesting? Okay, so what we're looking at here is a chart which is uh, not very volatile, which is pretty uh, uh, pretty good. You can see here that we've had a higher high after a subsequent rise there. We had a higher low. And there's been a nice basing pattern that's taken a year effectively where the price pulled back and then it resumed back to its higher high. So it created a nice solid base here. Plenty of opportunities to sell out for the non-believers. So those that didn't want to believe, they could have jumped this ship many, uh, many times over. But those who stuck around and those who have bought into the story have now got it back or close to above that previous higher, higher high. Now, as you've seen here, we've seen another bit of a pullback um, occurring. However, you'll see the price has stopped falling um, towards the end of February. If it has officially stopped falling and doesn't resume a downward trend, then it means that we have a new higher low. And again, remember what we're looking for is a zigzag pattern that's heading in a general direction northeast. What we want is a series of higher highs and higher lows. And in this instance here, this would be a continuation of an upward trend, which would mean that any possible break that we've seen um, obviously could see price gravitate towards the net, the previous uh, highest high, which will be a level of resistance, folks. Um, so what price is that at? That's at $7 and uh, one cent, I think, or one and a half cents, that is. Uh, currently, the price, though, and this is the thing with charts, it always um, uh, might not look as great, but in terms of the actual percentages, it's very impressive. Um, so that's at a dollar, uh, where are we? I think that's a dollar 33 as it stands at the moment. So from $1.33 to $2.01, I don't see all that much resistance um, for the price at this point, assuming that it's able to hold this high or low. You'll know you'll be wrong if the price turns back and crosses below that. Then it's then you're out, stop loss is set, you're gone. Whether you set up it as a parachute stop loss or just use that structural level of support, I would be out at the crossing below of this high or low if it ever got there. Um, but in this instance here, I, I can't see much resistance up until the upside. So, uh, and then, yes, if it breaks through that, then uh, that'll be an incredibly um, bullish uh, signal. So even if you were a little bit impartial and you're not going to necessarily jump in, and I said not, not all these charts look, um, uh, look fantastic. They're not pristine. Um, well, the, that previous one, the food one, looked pretty good. But in regards to this one here, um, there's signs that it looks good, but of course, what's occurring on the global scale could impact things. If you wanted it to look like a perfect chart, then you would wait for it to cross back above that $2 mark rather than jumping in too early. Okay, so here's another one again for those that like to catch the falling dagger. Um, an aggressive move. Okay, so the reason why I've brought this up on the attention is because the, of the aggressive move that we saw right here. So just that this is a horrible looking chart for Liberty Financial Group. As you can see, a series of lower highs. Uh, a little period here where unfortunately there was a fake out whereby we were back to our new higher high. But unfortunately, as you can see, it then continued to pull back once it uh, created a new lower low, which actually ended up as a bit of a level of support because that um, matched up to that previous lower low. You can see breaking below that, we've now created a new lower low. So all bets are uh, off for this uh, stock at around the $6.40 mark. If you decided to hold on, unfortunately, you saw it get down to $5.40. Worse still, you saw this massive sell-off towards the end of February, whereby its price hit $4.65. So effectively, another 20% even on this very low level. What we've seen since then, though, is the price rebound quite strongly. Now, that's done a few things. One has pushed the ATR into green, so it's now identifying that based on volatility, we have now potentially seen a possible upward move. Obviously, the moving averages look terrible. I would not advocate buying this stock right now, but I do put it on alert. Why? Because what I would hope to see from here on in is this price stabilise a bit. Go a little bit sideways for some time, get some solid footing, and then once it does that and creates a new level of structural resistance, 
then I'll be able to uh, consider a possible entry into something like this. Yeah, sure, it might keep going up. It might keep going northeast where it's absolute true V-shape recovery. Well, as you can see, it's already done V-shape. You can see that shape there. But um, would I necessarily be uh, rushing to put into this? No, I wouldn't. But this is one of those setups that I often look for where you see those rapid sell downs, you see it recoup the amount of that rapid sell down. And then you would hope to then see a bit of uh, market activity play out. And then in a few weeks' time, just go back, have a look at the stock, see what it's done since then. Has it been able to maintain its footing? If it has, then wait for a level of structural resistance to be broken before you get in. If it hasn't and pull back down towards these low levels, then I'd simply remove it from my watch list and I wouldn't bother with it anymore. Okay, so that's just a bit of an insight in regards to how I think with regards to big pullbacks in stocks like LFG when I'm using technical analysis as my means of buying or selling. Okay, so here's a good one. You know it's a technical analysis session because there's no way in a pig fit that I would actually bring this up in a fundamental session. So uh, technical analysis session, my holdings, MYR. Few things occurring here. I haven't made it blatantly obvious, but you can see here that we've had a series of lower highs and lower lows. So though we had the pretty strong run up, um, we've had that Mount Fuji pattern where it's come right back down the other way. Um, remember, just uh, visualize there, folks. Goes up, goes down. What, however, we have seen since then, though, is the price has stopped going down and has since recouped a little bit. And when it came back or did its pullback, look at this. It was actually a higher low than that previous lower low. So, given that's sort of going like that now, if it breaks above the 46 and a half cents, uh, oh, sorry, what's that? No, that's uh, 44 and a half cents, I should say, sorry. But I, I can see it getting to 49 cents. So for those that are wanting to do a little bit of aggressive trading, it's above the ATR as well. So that recent rebound has provided a bit of support there. I'd have a stop loss set at 40 cents if you were brave enough to try to um, uh, buy into this stock right now. Otherwise, you could just wait for the break above the 44 and a half. And I, I don't see much hindrance uh, up until 49 at the, um, at the very least. Okay. And then hopefully they've been able to sort themselves out and their stores won't be locked down anymore and all that sort of stuff. And that price chart will continue to rebound. And we know that, I mean, that's not all that long ago, folks. That was back in September, right? That was back when we all thought um, COVID was behind us. We didn't have a problem. And then we all went into lockdown once again. And that sucked. As a Victorian, I can tell you that's an official term. Um, but nonetheless, uh, early signs of a turnaround, but clear lineation points, as you can see, to when you be proven right or when you be proven wrong. Um, and that's um, just the way you have to think with regards to um, being a chartist. Laser bond, another interesting little story here. Um, for a few reasons, it's had a pretty strong run up from the uh, COVID reset. Uh, it uh, went uh, from about 30 cents up to about a dollar. So it had a pretty solid recovery up there. Since then, um, we've had a bit of sideways action in regards to price, but with a downward bias. I say downward bias because you can see there's this little triangle that's just formed here where we've had a series of lower highs, uh, but we've had some higher lows, or well, in particular here, a higher low. So what we're getting is a convergence here in this triangle. What does that effectively mean? Okay, well, you'll notice here I've got a few lines drawn. The first of which is the triangle formation or the flag formation, depending on how you want to call it. Um, I'm not um, here to split hairs. Basically, it's a period of what would be accumulation if it kept going up or distribution if it goes down. But for now, we're calling it accumulation. I have a bit of a bullish disposition on this one here for a few reasons, the first of which being... The uh, pullback or the um, taking a breath, as it were, been occurring since July, which is a good sign. Prices don't go in a northeast direction forever. They eventually have to take a breath. They've got to get themselves set. You've got to get the profit takers out. You've got to move them on. You've got to move the hot money off. And then you've got to have the support come in from the true believers. Um, and the true believers only come in when there's a price pullback, right? They're not chasing this thing on the way up. They've already been set, so they're not going to buy necessarily more. Um, as a go. Now, in this instance here, you can see we had a few retests as we tried to crack back up again, but both times it came up and then down, respected the line, came down, 
As you can see here, we even had a bit of a selling spurt, um, but fortunately the price has been able to hold. You can see it's hit this level a few times, which means that it's a strong level being respected. The price has since rebounded since then. Now, for the hyper-aggressive trader out there, there's an entry at 90 cents um, if you wanted to uh, get into that one there. Your stop would be set about here at about uh, the 82 cent mark. But for the hyper-aggressive trader, 90 cents is a uh, signal on the way up, probably better at 92. Either way, if it breaks this line going down, that is uh, particularly possibly a, a strong signal that it's broken out of this period of accumulation. And it could run quite quickly after it breaks out of that. So interesting little stock, had a good run. That consolidation to the side is what you want. Not a perfect entry right now. These are the sort of things you'd be watching for and looking for here. And remember, folks, you can replay all these episodes within the Spotty app um, to uh, just refresh yourself in regards to the content that we're touching on. Okay, so here's a stock that I missed the boat on. Okay, so I did not buy Lark Distilling. Um, and uh, it's always been one that I've been sitting there going, geez, I've got to get into this thing, got to get into this thing, never got into this thing. Fortunately, the CEO has done me a massive favour, the peanut, um, by going on social media with his uh, uh, meth pipe and um, smoking away and just reminding us all that even though you have a whole factory full of whiskey, um, you can still go out and do something stupid without actually drinking. Um, but anyways, uh, that's their problem. So I've seen a big pullback in price and I've been thinking to myself, hang on a tick, is this an opportunity for me? Okay, so a few things to note here that I wanted to bring up on this chart. The first of which is cheekingly, I sat there and I always thought to myself, this particular gap that, now mind you though, Lark's had a sensational year. It started from much lower than this point here um, and had been obviously much higher. So um, this is not for me to poo-hoo the company. I'm not saying I told you so or whatever the case may be. Like I said, I was not in this one and I kicked myself for not getting into it. But now I'm looking at when can I possibly get in or should I be able to get in now that they've removed that peanut. And folks, for those of you thinking, you know, oh, geez, you know, okay, so the guy, you know, smokes crystal meth. I mean, what does that mean? It doesn't impact his ability to be a good CEO, apparently. Well, mm, running a multi-million, hundred million dollar business, close to a billion dollars, uh, that's really not the sort of behavior you want the guy with his finger on the button uh, making decisions. Sure, great to run the world's largest economy. Back in uh, the US, you can have uh, uh, you can have some whack job running that, but not a company that I'm willing to put, invest my money in. And unfortunately, the fund managers in Lark made um, his tenure um, uh, not possible anymore. He had to move on. But as you can see here, folks, I was always patiently, cheekingly waiting. I said, oh, there's a gap here. So I'll just wait for the gap to be filled because, of course, gaps always do fill. I go, oh, you know what? When that happens, I'll consider buying. Right, okay. So that gap back there, folks, was in uh, around all, uh, July, sorry, I should say, 2021. Subsequent to that, the price did rise from uh, $3.74 and got to about $5.40. So as I said, I've been missed that boat. But guess what? Series of lower lows and lower highs has subsequently seen, guess what? <laughs> ah, that lower low there covered the gap. Ah, oh, geez, I'm a genius. Rightio. So the question now becomes, what am I going to do? Am I going to buy in right now? Well, the price has bounced a little bit, but as you'll know, it comes in with buying. So these red bars are indicating a few things. What they're indicating here really is that the price that it opens at is always higher generally than the price it closes at. And we've had that two consecutive days. Now, not a good sign when you get three of these sort of bars going like that. Generally, a pretty bullish signal, the only or bearish signal, I should say. The only thing that would save um, this in regards to Lark is that the close had been higher, but you can see here those solid bars down. I mean, that's just not, not the sort of sign you want to see. So what does that mean for me? I suspect that we're going to see a retest of around the $3.74, um, even if it gets to around $3.78. I don't really stress, I know. Okay, so here's the thing, folks, all right? A little trade secret. I know I might very well write in my responses um, that, oh, the level $3.70 or $2.20 or whatever the case may be. To be honest with you, I don't get all that 
fascinated in regards to the exact level. Sometimes I'll generally get in probably about a couple of cents higher, if that makes sense, um, because I know this is not an exact science. All you're looking for are general ranges, as it were, okay? Um, so though I might provide a definitive point that ends up being the amount, I'm not necessarily saying I would wait exactly for $3.74. I might very well start to get in at $3.76 or $3.78. Why can I do that with comfort? Because, of course, I'll be setting a parachute stop because this here would be a technical trade in the sense that I'd be trying to bank on that support level holding. That support level doesn't hold and it falls that certain percent from my entry, then I'll be out. Simple as that, okay? We know there's strong demand for LARC, all those sort of fundamental things. Well, I get that. But in this instance here, I'm looking at trying to pick up a bargain, a stock that has a propensity to run and run quite quickly, as Lark did. It's amazing how much the share price appreciated for a product that takes 12 years to actually produce. But anyway, that's not for me to judge. Like I said, I'm not talking fundamentals here. I'm talking technicals only. So in this instance, if it can hold that level of support, I think there'll be some good buying just there. Make sure you've got your stop loss in place because if it breaks that level of support, you'll immediately be on red alert and you'll need to make sure that you can get out um, and not be inebriated um, when that happens so you don't trip yourself up. Okay, so here's another one, EVZ, one of the classic dogs of the, the uh, share market, absolute stinker. This thing here is just a piece of trash. Uh, from 2016, this thing's been in a downward trend effectively. Uh, Multi-year downtrend, as I've written up there, just to reinforce to everyone um, why I've not necessarily had a positive disposition on this business. But again, I'm talking technicals here, and on a long-term chart, this thing is changing. It's changing because of this support level. As you can see, the support level at around 7.5 cents has uh, provided uh, a bit of a flaw in regards to price. It bounced back um, and created a new lower high, as you would expect because of the garbage nature of the business. However, the price pullback that we saw was not as deep. So the question is, is this a new high or low? Now, it's still too early to tell. There's a few things that are going to have to occur before we confirm whether this is a high, 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 or low, or whatever the case may be. But what we want to see really is we want to see a break above that lower high, ideally which is at 19 cents, okay? So I would not necessarily begin hyper-aggressive here, but if it can get above 19, and even if it can preferably hold above 19, I wouldn't be buying on the day it exactly crossed. I want to see some evidence that it's sustain maintainable, that it can actually hold that level. And if it is able to do that, then the next target becomes where this lower high was, which was 40 cents. So as you can see, we've had a pretty big decline. That previous peak back in 2016 was around $1.70. So there's a lot of time before the bus pulls out of the station, this one here, folks. You don't have to get hyper-aggressive. But if this chart from here on in starts to create the good structure we want to see to form the base to identify that it's now only the true believers that are left in on this business, then this may very well be the commencement of a possible entry pattern. All right, so that's all I'm going to really say about EVZ at the moment. Um, like I said, please don't rush out and buy it right now. But um, in regards to um, what it's doing, I'd be, um, I'm would be i starting to think for the first time in a very long time that this um, ship is starting to be turned around. Two, two touches of key levels of support, new possible high or low forming, can break that previous lower high here that would further provide conviction there. It just has that shape. High risk trade though, keep your stop losses tight if you do decide to participate. Okay, so shine the light, anything oil or lithium nickel at the moment, no point asking me any questions about this stuff because they're all going up. Seriously, you don't need to be a technical analyst, a fundamental analyst, or even good to figure out that oil and lithium and nickel stocks are going up at the moment. Just a reminder though, if you're trading the, the phenomenon, Keep your stop losses tight, okay? Many people get into these themes too late, and that's fine, right? You can get into them late. Sometimes there's still a lot of money to be made, okay? But whatever the case may be, make sure you've got your stop losses tight because what you don't want to be left holding the can when all the bubble and fizz has been taken out of the sector, okay? So that's um, to shine the light, and obviously there's hundreds of those buggers lying around. 
Serve call. Interesting chart, this one here. Okay, so why did I bring it to your attention? Um, again, as you can see here, uh, new shutdowns um, with COVID restrictions uh, on, on uh, release of Omicron saw the market see the sell-off. Now, all of a sudden, we're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable in regards to what's going on there. We had a big volume bar, which actually occurred after the lowest low. Now, that's interesting because it was actually a down day that day, but the price hardly moved. An incredibly bullish signal. See that volume spike? See what my mouse is there? Though it's a red bar, which means on the day the price closed down, it was only a very small move. You can't hardly see it. It looks like a spit or it looks like a spot on my screen um, just right there. Since then, the price has solidly rebased. It's crossed um, back above the ATR. You'll notice the ATR is now below. It's breached that previous lower high. And price has now come back to a support level. Now, I don't know what it's done today. If it can hold today's level and if it can go and bounce back up again, to me, bang, this is a, a chart that looks like it's positive, particularly on the reopening thematic, um, particularly on the thematic of people don't need a whole level of office space anymore, that there are being more mobile sort of um, office solutions um, being considered. So this is a pattern which really does interest me, where we've had that rapid run up. Um, you'll notice the price did breach that previous lower high, but since then it's come back a bit. If it can hold around these levels, even if it goes a little bit below, but then you see the kick back up, that would be a particularly uh, good-looking chart for me to shine the light. JCS Curve Solutions, um, interesting little chart here. As you can see, pretty much flat for quite a uh, period of time. Was stuck in uh, a channel. That channel, though, um, had been arising previous to this, or previous to this blue line I drew right here. You'll notice the moving averages are both going up. Um, that's because there was effectively a parallel channel going up here in regards to this stock. The reason why it broke out, though, was because we had a lower low. Normally, this would have been all bets are off. We're out of JCS because it had been going up, but now it's gone down. It's broken the channel. It's a new lower low. Obviously, it's in a downtrend. Of course, you could have waited, as many people do, for that slight little pullback, the new lower high to be formed, and then to come down. But guess what? No lower high. In fact, the high that it created ended up being a new higher high. So what we've seen here is a company that effectively created a new lower high the beginning of a possible downtrend. However, the conviction in the business saw support come in so aggressively that the price actually hit a new higher high. Again, another particularly bullish signal. Okay, so this is the market ignoring what the price has done and really jumping in and backing this story. Okay, which would indicate to me a pretty bullish looking signal. So you'll notice here that that little upward move um, that upward trend line that on the tops there. Look, it's only a few cents extra here. So no, depending on what JCS does from here, I think a close of an extra five cents above this would be enough to give me the conviction that it'd be something worth worrying about. Uh, on my five cents, sorry, um, 5%, I should say. That'd probably give me enough of the conviction in order to get in. But it is a very small stock, folks. So you always got to be uh, reminded of uh, that, that it can swing around a bit. Uh, but nonetheless, though, uh, ATR has gone positive. The moving averages are still nice and wide apart. That particular move there was quite bullish. I like, this, I like the look of that chart. And then I have to finish with BHP. Um, at the moment, it still has oil, but uh, it will obviously hand that over to Woodside soon enough. Uh, nonetheless, though, you can't fault this chart. I mean, we had that big sell-off on the iron ore correction, which all iron ore stocks got belted, as they did. Found a level of support. <laughs> Just how many times have I shown you this, folks? Do you think do you think there's a reason why we keep talking about it? It's because it happens all the time. Don't overthink, right? If it's just, it just works, works. So we had a lower high, lower high, bang, finally hit that level of support. You'll see it got touched a few times, um, which further adds strength to the weight of that particular um, uh, support line. The price rebased, broke that previous lower high, went on its merry way, created a new higher high, pulled back a new 
um, high or low, uh, then pulled up again. High, so you can see it's just done that normal thing. It's now broken that previous highest high. Pre the iron ore price collapse, BHP is now above that level. If that is not a mighty chart, then I don't know what is. The, well, actually, it's a mighty business. Um, and yes, the chart's just simply uh, reflecting that. And it's been a good period for BHP. Um, obviously, that could change. They could go back on another iron ore pullback. But given what's happening in Russia, Ukraine and the like, and Chinese uh, suppliers uh, are just encountering another issue, then I think there's going to be a bit of heat taken out of the uh, bulk metals discussion. And therefore, uh, BHP gets another reprieve for now. Uh, as you've seen with that price run up in the last few days, the geopolitical concerns have really kicked in. But BHP, again, another one of those uh, charts that uh, uh, just looks quite good. And, yep, think less, make more money. And it's as simple as that. Fundamental Wednesday. Mate, we'll come back on that. So uh, we'll have that uh, coming up soon. And then uh, Prospect, thank you for your suggestion. I think I will do that. Um, uh, I will do the ins and outs of equity options in order to explain what they are and how they work. Don't worry, folks. I'm not going to go into the mathematics um, of it um, in regards to the Black-Scholes model and calculating out what options are and how to do it. There's plenty of software apps out there to help you calculate options, the price of options. But this is even more rudimentary of that than that. How do they work? Why are they issued? Um, you know, how, do they, how are they priced? Uh, what happens with expiry? What role does the expiry date play? Those sorts of things in regards to the concepts, why to consider them and why you wouldn't want to touch them. Either way, we'll talk about the ins and outs of equity options uh, when it comes to uh, our casual Thursday, um, to which I'm also trying to line up our first ASX listed company to appear on the show. Um, unfortunately, it's not an ASX20 company. <laughs> I just, just want to add uh, that there. Um, little old spotty isn't big enough for them. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I do want to introduce some more diverse sort of views uh, to hopefully keep this uh, session um, and the like a little bit more engaging. Okay, so let me get back there. There we go. All right then, folks. So uh, until I get to chat to you all again online and see you again on the Wednesday, you've been watching Market at Midday. I'm Elio Tomato, as you know. This has been Spotty Connect, and together we'll be shining a spotlight on shares. Talk soon.